Hello and welcome to another presentation, you guys. I'm like so excited. We are going to be talking about Today Matters. Smile and move. Wow. Smile and move. I, I like that. Okay, when we're talking about Today Matters, this actually came from one of um, my friend and mentor, Dr. John C. Maxwell book. So we're going to go and just talk a little bit about the Daily Dozen. And that's what he calls it. Because we're going to go over 12 things that you can do daily, that you can focus on. Oh, the beautiful balloons. <laughs> okay, the first one we're going to talk about is attitudes. Choose and display the right attitude daily. Sometimes we don't throughout the day feel like, you know, having a great attitude, but try as much as you can to display an attitude that's caring and loving and just, just exudes happiness. <laughs> yeah, we want to always walk in our happy place. It's not a good thing to have a bad attitude all the time. I know there are certain situations that may cause you to want to sway that way, but <laughs> we're going to try not to go that way. And then let's talk about priorities. Determine and act upon important priorities. Keyword, important. You know, sometimes we put low priority things above the high priority. And then once we finish completing all the low priority tasks that we had to do, guess what? The day is gone. You have no time left for your high priorities. So that means you may have busted a suspense, suspense or you're in a situation where, uh-oh, I forgot to do something like pay a bill. <laughs> pay a bill by 8 p.m. <laughs> How do I know that? Because I've been there before. <laughs> I might be aging myself, but there was a time if you pay the bill after a certain time, it won't be calculated for that day. <laughs> It'll roll over to the next day. Or if you forget to make a deposit at the bank, guess what? At some banks after 2 p.m., it's too late. So, you know, just make sure when you are writing your daily tasks that you put priorities next to them. Put like a little number or something, whatever you know system you want to use. Try try doing that. Or there's something I do with my clients. I it's a, a form that it has big rocks and little rocks. Put the smaller things on the little rocks. And the bigger things that you have to get done and <laughs> make sure, you know, they're really big and broad. So make sure that you fill those in first. Things that you know you have to get done. Because you do not want to get caught up in a situation to where, uh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and let's talk about our health. Oh man, this is something that so many people are like, I don't have time to walk for 30 minutes. Or I don't have time to, you know, go to the gym or even go and do a little activity. You know, know and follow healthy guidelines. Oh, I don't have time to cook. So I go get this McDonald's or Burger King. I'm not saying anything's wrong with McDonald's or Burger King because they do have the bomb fish sandwiches. <laughs> but just make sure you're... you're thinking about what you're putting in your body. You know, I'm guilty of this because I love me some pizza. I I'm not even gonna, you know, fade the funk on that one, but I know there are times where it's like, mm, no, you know, go eat some baked fish or something. <laughs> Cause yeah, you had a little bit too much of that right now. So just focus on your health because you want to be there for your family. Oh, and guess what? The next one is about family. <laughs> 
is communicate and care for your family. Wow. Mm. First of all, communicate. Do you know how many of us do not practice effective communication or not even know what it really means or not know how to speak our family members language and when i say language i'm not talking about english spanish no 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 no, no. their behavioral style that you know we learn that with disc and it is so crucial in oh my god it will change the dynamics of your family if you know how to communicate effectively with them you know you have the d type person the d style okay they're very dominant people <laughs> and then you have i they're inspirational they're like they're life of the party then you have the s the steady the steadiness people you're very steady and calming and you know like the motherly type and then you have the c the compliant people like oh man facts and figures <laughs> They're all about all about the money and the facts and the figures and the the, the I's dotted, the T's crossed. <laughs> so sometimes we might be talking to like even our children. And like, why don't they understand me? Why are they not doing what I say I do? Because they tuned you out. <laughs> you, you don't you're not speaking their language. So they're not gonna hear you anymore. And so it's called a thinking. Practice and develop good thinking skills. Wow. You know, a lot of times we do things I even think about it. Or <laughs> we think, but we don't think logical. <laughs> How many times have you done that? You're like, yeah, I thought about it, but hmm. Man. I had the wrong thoughts in my head when I just made the decision to do that. <laughs> we don't want to be in that place. Oh man, and commitment. <sighs> Make and keep proper commitment. Hmm. Sometimes we say we're committed to things, but we're really not. So make sure you are going to commit to that thing, that task, that person, <laughs> before you say you will. Oh, and let's talk about finance. Oh, yes. Hmm. Properly manage your money. Oh, my God. Make the right financial decisions. Create a budget. <laughs> uh, I'm guilty. I won't even say that I'm not. I am very guilty of this. There are sometimes, especially with my children, they're like, well, mom, uh, mom, can I? And I say, okay, go ahead. Knowing I did not have it in my budget. But we have to get to a place where we are comfortable with saying no, especially to our children. <laughs> My children would probably have a cow if they hear me say that. But, you know, we have to get in a place where we know where our money is spent and we make better choices. You know, this pandemic has really shown us that tomorrow isn't promised. Your job isn't promised tomorrow either. You never know what will happen that will cause you to be in financial strain and your faith deepen and live out your faith we all have faith in something just just be true to yourself and have faith in whatever it is that you have faith in don't let others sway you to one way or another you know just just be true to you in relationships, intimate, and invest in solid relationships. Yes. But first, before we have these relationships, we need to know how to connect with people. 
And remember, I was talking about the disc. If you know how to speak their language, <laughs> you, you will have a better chance at building a relationship with them. Yes, go to networking events. Go, go, just get out the house and do things. <laughs> go build those strong relationships with people and generosity. Plan for and model generosity at all times. In values, embrace and practice good values. What do you value? Do you have a list of core values that you have? If not, I would think that you might want to have a sit down and think about what it is that you value the most. And then look at the things you do, your actions and people you're around, even your job. So the things that you value is the same does it align with your company values do you even know your company values because if you don't i suggest you um go to your boss and learn them <laughs> because you need to know in growth seek and experience improvements oh man i am a growth queen <laughs> let me tell you i am uh, I'm always seeking out an opportunity to grow. I grow daily, even if it's just going out and watching a YouTube video. I have to, I have to keep growing, keep going, get my mind. I gotta get them juices flowing. I just, I just can't stop. I don't want to stop growing. I will never stop growing. And when I don't stop growing, that I will never stop growing other people either. So if you are a leader, and guess what we all are, you lead someone, you influence someone, even if it's your family, your children, guess what? They're following you. So if you stop growing, how are you gonna help them grow? You know, that's saying such things a law to lead. You can only lead to your level. So if you're at a level one <laughs> and others are level two or higher, how are you going to leave them? No, it will be the other way around. So take these daily dozen <laughs> and, and practice them. You know, practice them daily, weekly. Just, just do it. You will not regret it. I promise you, you will not. Let's talk about some mile and move. <laughs> Embrace a positive attitude and take action. We must remind ourselves and others to be positive and service oriented. You know, it's all about connecting, listening, watching, you know, the ask. <laughs> it's about people, relationships, and connections. Be thankful for the challenges and opportunities. Happily lend a hand, even when it's not convenient. <laughs> I know we don't always want to lend a hand, but guess what? We have to. You know, it's all about embracing a positive attitude and taking actions. Having an inspirational message of service and contribution. Like, man. Complain less and smile more. Hmm. Did you hear what I said? Complain less and smile more. Yeah, we have to. And let's get a little bit into the five ways to smile. 
How about waking up <laughs> with a smile on your face? Hmm. I, I think I can do that. Can you? Just wake up and just be thankful that you, your eyes were opened. <laughs> you know, and it's back to faith. It just depends on, you know, your religion or if you have one or not, you know, just, just thank, thank whoever for, you know, waking you up. Yeah, thank you. That's another way to smile. Be thankful. Be approachable. Okay. Now this one here is a biggie. Now, being approachable is inviting someone into your space. Now you can say, Oh, yeah, I have an open door policy. Do you really? Are you approachable? Do you frown upon someone coming into your space? Do you frown upon someone, your employees or anyone like sending you emails, calling you on the phone, asking you a question? That's not being approachable. So what does that mean? It's not also, it's also not a smiling situation. <laughs> you know, just, just practice being genuinely approachable. Your staff will thank you. Man, and complain less. Oh my, how many times have we just been a Debbie Downer, <laughs> always complaining about things, or have employees always complaining about things, or even coworkers always complaining. I have gotten to a place where if you're complaining a lot, I would say, you know, go find a solution and come back and tell me what it is. I use a three COA approach. It's like, hey, go find three three possible solutions and bring them back to me and we'll discuss them. Don't complain about it if you don't have a solution for it. Now, why would I say that? Because what does complaining do? <laughs> it just keeps the negativity going. And that negative energy is something that spreads very quickly. And so I am one who does not want that negative energy around me. No one should. So get the complainers away from you by telling them to go, <laughs> go sit down in a corner and color and come up with some solutions to make their life more happier or solve this problem that we're having that they're complaining about. And another thing is smile more. <sighs> smiling just brightens up your day <laughs> you know people always ask me why I'm always laughing and smiling because I I am so blessed to be on this earth and still be alive so why not smile there's nothing like it smile say good morning say hello how you doing just you know <laughs> Yeah, I love this slide. It's just, mm, keep smiling. <laughs> now let's talk about ways to move. Start early and go long. I can't tell you how, I, I am one who is always up to 11, 12, one o'clock. <laughs> I'm up very late. And it can have an effect on you. One thing I have learned, if I go to bed earlier, I wake up earlier. And it's like, man, I get a lot more done earlier in the morning. You know, try it. Try setting your alarm for maybe an hour earlier. Or maybe start out with 30 minutes earlier. And go to bed about 30 minutes earlier and see how more productive you are just by 
getting to bed a little bit earlier and waking up earlier. Because when you wake up earlier, it's just something about that, oh man, I can get so much done before, before I can start working. A lot of us are teleworking right now, but some of us aren't. So just get up and enjoy a cup of coffee, read the paper, go on, go on Facebook or social media or something. Just do what you do at first thing in the morning, a little bit earlier. And you'll see, it seems like you have more time. I know you you still had to say in 24 hours, but it just seems like we have more time in a day. And always exceed expectations. I said exceed. <laughs> that means go higher than. Just go higher than you did yesterday. Just go harder. Just go get it, like some people say. <laughs> and if you're looking at your performance evaluations, you want to exceed. Because, you know, when you exceed, you more likely have a bonus coming to you. I hope. <laughs> so wake up expecting to exceed expectations every day. Have a sense of urgency. I'm not talking about go, you know, be frantic or anything like that. No, just, just pick up the pace a little bit and be resourceful and resilient. Man, go out and research, go out and find things, go out and figure some things out. And if you fail, that's okay. It is okay to fail. I am telling you, you have to fail to be successful. Mm -hmm. You just heard me say that. If you don't fall, how are you going to know how it, is, how it feels to get back up? Yeah. Fail forward. Dust yourself off and keep it moving. <laughs> yes. Fail. It's good for you. <laughs> Man, I need to write that one down. <laughs> yes, it's... Smile and move. Now, I have talked to you about the Daily Dozen, you know, the 12 things that you should do, you know, from John Maxwell's book. Today Matters. Um, you, you know, research and go pick it up. Order it. <laughs> we talked about attitudes, priorities, health, family, thinking, commitment, finance, faith, relationships, generosity, values, and growth. And we talked about smiling and moving. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a little bit of dance when I said that. <laughs> Remember, there are five ways to smile. We wake up, be thankful, be approachable, complain less, and smile more. And then there are four ways to move. Start early and go long. Exceed expectations. Have a sense of urgency. Be resourceful and resilient. Now, I hope you learned a, little, a few things that you didn't quite know before. And I hope you actually implement some of the things that we discussed and a way to hold yourself accountable for this is create an action plan and get accountability partner. That can be uh, your coworker, someone in your family. Just find someone to make sure that you check the blocks off, <laughs> that you did, you made every little step that you said you were gonna do. And one thing also, after every completed milestone, have a way that you're going to reward yourself. Yeah, it's the baby steps. Every time you, you complete something, you meet a goal, just go and you have, you have it written down what you're going, what is your reward for that? Even if it's just going to get a Starbucks coffee, 
with a little extra cream or something or that you can go out and, and purchase a shirt. <laughs> it can be any little thing or you get to treat yourself to some ice cream, you know, just something. Just make sure that you implement, you take action and you complete what you said you were gonna do. This has been fun. <laughs> My name is Dr. Tracy Lashley and I have really enjoyed <laughs> the presentation today. You know, and I enjoy growing people. I really hope you got some things out of this. You can look me up, Dr. Tracy Lashley. Info. Have a great day.